Istina, the Shining Knight, is a warrior from the final days of Camelot. Unlike the classic Sir Justin, Istina is a young, gender-fluid knight who served King Arthur and fought to defend the kingdom. During Camelot's fall, Istina witnessed its destruction at the hands of the Shida, a malevolent race from the future bent on erasing the remnants of Arthur's legacy. In her final moments at Camelot, Istina was caught in a time vortex and thrown into modern-day Los Angeles. Lost in a strange, unfamiliar world, she continued her quest to avenge Camelot and defeat the Shida. Armed with her enchanted sword, Caliburn, and riding her winged horse, Vanguard, Estina clung to her chivalric ideals, even though they seemed out of place in this new era. In Grant Morrison's Seven Soldiers of Victory, Estina is one of seven seemingly unrelated heroes, each facing a unique challenge. Unaware that their fates are intertwined in a larger battle against the Shida. Unlike traditional superhero teams, the Seven Soldiers do not work together directly, but their actions influence one another's stories as they try to prevent the Shida's final assault on Earth. The Seven Soldiers include Satana, a powerful sorceress struggling with her magic and self-confidence. Guardian, a protector of Manhattan's underground population. Clarion the Witch Bull, a rebellious magical outcast. Mr. Miracle, a master escape artist facing cosmic challenges. Bulleteer, a reluctant superhero. And Frankenstein, a resurrected monster on a mission to eliminate the Sheeta. Istina's role in this larger story is pivotal. She represents the link between the mythic past of Camelot and the future horrors of the Sheeta. Haunted by visions of her fallen mentor, Sir Galahad, Estina is driven by her unyielding sense of honor and justice, determined to restore Camelot's glory and stop the Sheeta's destruction. The Shida, a time-traveling race intent on harvesting the fruits of human civilization, are led by their queen, Loriana Tenebrae. Estina's history with the Shida makes her a central figure in the eventual confrontation between the Seven Soldiers and Gloriana's forces. In the climactic battle, Estina confronts Queen Gloriana and reclaims her place as a knight of honor, helping to secure Earth's future by drawing on the lessons of the past. Despite the high cost and personal sacrifices, Estina remains steadfast in her pursuit of justice, standing as both a tragic and heroic figure, bridging the gap between a lost civilization and a modern world that no longer understands her ideals. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a closer look at McParlane's Shining Knight from the Seven Soldiers of Victory series. Now, I have to be upfront here. I'm not super familiar with this version of The Shining Knight. Uh, the one I know best is Sir Justin, the male version, who I mostly recognize from his appearance in Justice League Unlimited. But today, we're diving into his Tina's take on the character. Let's see if McBerlane did justice to her in this action figure form. First up, the figure stands at about 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters, so it's in line with McPerlane's usual scale. I've been told that this figure reuses the Flashpoint Wonder Woman body mold, which I never got to see in person because exclusive figures like that don't really hit stores here in the Philippines, and if they do, they come with a hefty markup. So. I just made peace with the fact that 
Flashpoint Wonder Woman wasn't going to join my collection. But honestly, the reuse makes sense here since Istina is essentially a woman in medieval armor, so it works pretty well. Now, my first impression when I took her out of the box, her head sculpt really gave me evil in vibes from Masters of the Universe. That facial expression looks more villainous than heroic to me, complete with a horn helmet. I'm not sure if this is intentional or even accurate to Istina's personality since I'm not deeply familiar with the character, but I would have preferred a more neutral or heroic look. One thing I do like is the color scheme. The light gold plastic on the armor mixes well with the darker bronze tones on the chainmail. It adds some nice contrast, which is also helped by the subtle silver and black they use on the chest logo. And check out the little touches like the red ruby on the helmet and the sword. They give the figure that extra pop. As you'd expect from McParlane, the sculpt is loaded with intricate details. They really nailed the texture and design, down to the tiniest parts of the armor. But, and this is a big but, the boots throw me off. The design just doesn't make sense. It looks like they slap a metal boot over a metal leg armor and it's got this odd cut. On top of that, the knee joints are pretty loose, making it a bit of a struggle to get her to stun properly. I think another missed opportunity is the cape. If McParlane had given her a cloth cape, it would have added a premium feel to the figure. As far as accessories go, she only comes with her sword. I have a sneaking suspicion that McParlane might reissue this character in a deluxe set with her wing horse vanguard and if they do i hope they fix i really hope they fix those boots then give her a tie cut and upgrade to a cloth cape i definitely double dip on that all right let's check out the articulation and see how well this figure holds up in terms of possibility let's start with the head articulation. For the hands, she can do the T pose. She has a uh, here, double jointed elbow and a double peg wrist. The shoulder pad is on the way if you want her to do that. Surprisingly, she actually has an ab crunch. And the cut on the armor there makes her lean back pretty sweet. That's a very, very good range. Then on the side, she also has rotation here. Thigh swivel is pretty much non-existent. She can kick that far, but that armor portion is on the way. She can kick back that. Hmm. She can actually do the split. So I guess this is soft enough for not to hindrance her articulation. And she can do the bend them that far. Yeah, it's really good. In the case of this, the armor portion is on the way here, so she can only do a 90 degree range. And then, as I said, this portion that I'm really, uh, that I really find weird, 
I don't know why she has boots here separated from this portion of the armor. Now this can do that and that. She also has toe articulation. So overall, it actually has a pretty solid articulation for a McPerlin uh, figure that is fully armored here. I'm actually surprised by the ab crunch. Yeah. All right, so what's the final verdict on McPerlin's Shining Knight figure? Overall, it's a solid release with a lot of great detail, especially when it comes to the sculpt and armor design. The mix of golden bronze and subtle accent colors really gives the figure a visually appealing look. However, the head sculpt and facial expression might feel a bit off for those expecting a more heroic appearance, and those knee joints definitely make posing a bit frustrating. The boots are also a bit of a mess in terms of design, and I think McFarlane could have gone the extra mile by adding a cloth cape to elevate the premium feel. That said, if you're a fan of the Seven Soldiers or just into well-crafted medieval style figures, this one has a lot of display potential, especially with all the intricate details in the armor. And like I mentioned earlier, if they reissue her with Vanguard and make some improvements, I'd definitely be all in for that. So while it's not perfect, it's still a good addition to the collection for those looking for something a little different from McFarlane's usual lineup. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more reviews. See you next time.